All right, we got the graph of the function f of x is shown. Which of the following statements is true about f? I'm just going to look at each of these individually. f is undefined at x equals 1. That is false. It's defined right there, so that's not correct. 2, f is defined but not continuous at x equals 2. Well, x equals 2, it's defined, and it's also continuous. So that's false. 3, f is defined and continuous at x equals 3. Um, both of those are wrong. The vertical asymptote here at 3, it's not continuous there. Those are both false. So the only answer could be a z. Number 2. This says that we are supposed to let y equal this function. What y value must be needed to make the function continuous? In order to be able to make a function continuous, it must mean there's a hole in the graph. So if there's a hole in the graph, that means cancels have to factors have to cancel. So the top is going to factor into an x plus 7 and an x minus 3. The bottom is a difference of two squares. The x minus 3's cancel. Hole. It's kind of like goal in soccer. But you're not European, so you don't even know that. There's a hole at the x minus 3 equals 0. There's a hole at x equals 3. The problem asks for a y value. To find the y coordinate of your hole, we're going to plug in to what's left of the function. y equals x plus 7 over x plus 3. The 3. And you end up with 10 over 6 as the y value of the whole, which is the same as 5 thirds. This has a whole at 3, 5 thirds. To be clear, what y value would be needed to make the function continuous for all positive numbers in the domain? Well, since there's a hole in the graph at five, at three five thirds, to plug the hole, the y value has to be five thirds. Moving on. For which value of k is the function continuous at x equals four? Well, well let's see. So if we take the function sine of pi over x, and we take the function k square roots of x over 2, those have to be equal to each other. Because if they're equal to each other, the y values, that means it would be continuous. We want to know when this is 4, so we replace x with 4, and then we just simply solve the equation for k. Sine of pi over 4 is 1 over the square root of 2, or if you prefer, square root of 2 over 2. The AP test doesn't care what format it's in. 4 divided by 2 is 2. To get k by itself, we could multiply both sides by 1 over the square root of 2. On the right side, you're left with the k. On the left, you end up with 1 times the square root of 2. Pardon me, 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 2, which is 1 half. So that is answer D. Number 4. The function is continuous on the closed interval. So this is the intermediate value theorem. That's what I'm thinking when I hear this and has values that are given in the table above. The equation g of x is 1 half must have at least two intersections on this interval. Now, this is take two on this problem because I got interrupted. So, I don't know where I was, but let me tell you where I am. I need a visual of this. So to get a visual of this, I'm going to graph in a coordinate plane, somewhat to scale, the ordered pairs that I know. I know that 0, 1 is a point on this. 
I know that 2, 2 is a point on this. I also know that the equation g of x equals a half, which is going to look like this, exists in this. So reading this more clearly now, uh, one more thing, 1k, someplace there is a value k for 1. So the function is continuous, and the equation g of x, that's this red line here, must have at least two intersections with f. So f is a function that has to go through this. It has to go down here, and it has to go back up to get to 2. We know it has to go down there because there's at least two points of intersection. So what could k be? Could k be 0? Could the graph actually come down and hit the y-axis? I don't see why it couldn't. Could it be a half? No, because if it's a half, it's going to come down here and touch this one time and back up. That's not possible. Could k be 1? No, because it's not going to hit it at all. Could it be a 2? No. Could it be a 3? No. So it's going to have to be answer A. This one I've spent a lot of time on. And what I landed on for this one is using the answers, because it's multiple choice, is probably your best bet. So here's what I'm going to do. Let me explain to you the concept first. For what values of k will this have point discontinuity? We know that point discontinuity happens when you can cancel common factors. So that means that x squared as the first term and the plus 6 as the last term has to factor. That can factor in several ways. It could be x minus 1 and an x minus 6. Could factor into an x minus 2 and an x minus 3. Those are the only ways this could factor. So whichever way it factors means the denominator is either going to be an x minus 1 or an x minus 6 or an x minus 2 or an x minus 3. Personally, I think all that information is probably a little much for you. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to plug numbers in for k and see which one gives us the correct answer. So I will cut to the chase and tell you this one does, and let me just show you how it gives you the correct answer. If k is 3, it's going to be x squared minus 3 plus 2, x plus 6, over x minus 3. It's going to give us x squared minus 5x plus 6, over x minus 3, now the numerator should factor so that it has a factor of an x minus 3, and it does. Since the x minus 3 is canceled, there's a hole there. So the answer is E. Number 6. Suppose f is continuous on the closed interval from 0 to 4. I'm just going to draw something real quick in x and y coordinate plane and x and y coordinate plane. I'm going to do this twice because I've done the problem before. So it's continuous on the closed interval from 0 to 4. I'm thinking intermediate value of theorem again since it mentioned closed interval. Suppose f of 0 is 1. So I'm going to put that here. And f of 1 is 2. I'm going to put that here. f of 2 is 0. I'm going to put that here f of 3 is negative 3. I'm going to put that down here. f of 4 is positive 3. I'm going to put that up here somewhere. Picture is not to scale. Which of the following statements about the zeros of f is always true? Well, let me just copy this over here because I'm going to show you a couple different things that could happen to this.
Since this graph is continuous, it has to hit all these points and still be a function. So in this case, it is hitting the x-axis two times. But does that mean it's limited to two times? It is not. This graph could come down here and back up and down here and back up and down here and back up. We don't know what it does, but we do know that it has to cross the x-axis here in some place over here. So it's at least two times. Um, let's see, exactly one? I don't think so. Exactly two? Well, it's exactly two in the first picture, but I showed in the second picture that could be more than that. Has more than two zeros? It might, it doesn't have to. The only thing that's certain is that it has more than one. Number seven. This function has removable discontinuity at no, no. Those are the only places it could be. And it has neither of those because those are jump discontinuities. So that's E. Same picture. Number eight. On which intervals is it continuous? was well, continuous from negative 3 to negative 2, which all the answers show that. It's continuous right after negative 2 to 1. Um, pardon me, not to 1, to 0. This is 0 here. Continuous means we can trace it without lifting up our pencil. It's continuous here, here, and here. So that middle interval goes from negative 2 to 0, does not include negative 2, but that one does, so that's not right. It, it does include 0, which the rest of those three do. And then it's continuous from 0, right after 0, I should say, to 2.5. So this is wrong because it should be open. This one, the second one, looks like it's possibly going to work. Third one looks like it also works. So I'm not looking at something right here. B doesn't work because it's supposed to not include the zero. So we know it's not B. We know it's not here. We know it's not here. Let's look at C and E a little bit closer. So just reading C, it says it starts at negative 3 and goes to negative 2. It includes that. I agree. Then it starts at negative 2, doesn't include it, and goes to 0, and includes it. I agree. Starts at 0, doesn't include it, and goes to 2.5. So I'm thinking it's going to be C. E says a very similar thing, but E is breaking this into two different intervals, saying it's not continuous at 1, which is false. So the answer is definitely C. Nine, where does the function have jump discontinuity? Has it here at negative two? Has it here at zero? So two, negative two and zero is answer D. I will be back hopefully shortly to do the extended response. Short answer, free response, whatever it's called.